this is a reloading aspect that we're going to delve into here. I build highly accurate rifles as all my customers over the many many years that I've been building rifles very well know and the way that that's all happened is paying attention to many details and learning always learning the perfection that I have there's things that I learn all the time even though for instance I've been reloading for the greatest share of my lifetime now I get a considerable amount of correspondence from folks that think just because they had me build a rifle put a match grade barrel on it it's properly bedded it the, the mounts are good and tight on the rifle it's got a good quality scope using quality reloading components why doesn't why can't I get my rifle to shoot well, I'm going to tell you why you can't get your rifle to shoot and how perhaps you can get your rifle to shoot. You just don't start with a load you picked out of the loading manual and expect because you bought a match grade barrel and you had an expert gun maker build your rifle that it's just going to automatically shoot a bug hole group. It doesn't work like that. It didn't work like that for me and it doesn't still doesn't work like that for me. But it doesn't take me very long, any rifle that I built, to work up a load. Just because you weighed your powder charge, you've got good quality cases, you've got good quality bullets, and quality powder, and you've followed the reloading manual, people seem to think that, that there's something wrong. Well, this guy doesn't know what he's doing. I can't get my rifle to shoot. Well, I'm going to tell you what. The guy that doesn't know what he's doing is the guy that's got that sort of attitude. He hasn't given anything a chance. His rifle is only shot as well as he is capable of loading for his rifle. And I tell people this repeatedly. I've built many thousands and thousands of a dollar of rifles and there's individuals that won't pay to have loads worked up, precision loads worked up for the rifle and these are the people that are quick to judge that well you know something's wrong. Yeah, what's wrong is that you don't understand how you get accuracy and the only way that you get accuracy is you balance all the components to the rifle and that means working up a load starting several grains below the top listed load in the manual and by the way that top listed load is not a maximum load it's not listed particularly as a maximum load it's only the top load that was used when they worked up loads for that particular caliber and they used pressure test equipment and they limited their pressure to say 52,000 or something like that. Well, you probably have to load in instances over what that top load is listed in the loading manual to get the accuracy that you're expecting. The accuracy only comes when you get uniform performance. And uniform performance comes with velocities that don't vary very much whether you're shooting a three shot string, a five shot string, a ten shot string or what have you. You have to work up with a particular bullet primer case and powder combination say in our standard cartridges or our magnum cartridges about a one half of a grain at a time with a particular powder with, with everything else and when you get to a point where you think that you've done the best that you could and you've followed my video on reading pressure with a micrometer and you're doing so and you're using a quality chronograph 
to chronograph your velocities, you can't have an accurate load or your velocity spread is 50, 60 feet a second. And this is what I see. People buy into premium select match ammunition aspects. And they think that because they bought that, select means only that they've selected certain components to load in that particular cartridge. It doesn't mean that it's anything special, it doesn't mean that it's anything accurate. And repeatedly I see this. This ammunition that's marked on the box select for 300 Weatherby for, from a certain manufacturer may not be capable because of the ballistics that it delivers and I mean the velocities and the, the variation in the velocities high variation in velocity is never going to give you top accuracy and this melt multiplies many times over as you go down range you might have a load that say for instance will shoot with a fairly high velocity spread around an inch or inch and a quarter at 100 yards but it's never going to shoot well if you go down to three or four or five hundred yards because you've got too high a velocity spread. These things are magnified. A good load, a good kind of a, a rule of thumb, it's, you're best off if you can obtain single digit, single digit standard deviation, which is the average of a string of shots, the velocities of a string of shots. Anyway, if you can hold this down in the single digits for your standard deviation, you're probably got a pretty doggone good load with that particular combination. Now, I don't know, I'm not always satisfied unless it's pretty exceptional. If I think there's room for improvement, one of the first things I'll do is I'll leave everything else the same. I only change, change one thing at a time. I might change make and brand of primer. For instance, let's say that I was using a Federal 215 primer in a 300 Weatherby. Well, I may try a Winchester Large Rifle Primer. And by the way, the Winchester Large Rifle Primer is pretty much just has about the same amount of stoutness to its ability to knight a powder charge as the Federal 215. Winchester also makes a Winchester large rifle magnum primer and those primers are too hot a primer for our normal magnum cartridges and what I mean by that is those were developed for big magnum cartridges like 30 by 378, 338 by 378, you know, 378 Weatherby and things of that sort, big huge capacity cases. That's where they, that's where they work to knight those very high volume of slow burning powders. It's not right. That primer is not right in 300 Weatherby type rounds for the most part under hardly any circumstances or a 270 or a 30 off 6 or a 7 mag or what have you. The primer is simply too hot. Now once I've tried that primer I'll perhaps try another primer. I'll perhaps try maybe a Remington nine and a half or a nine and a half Magnum primer. And there are other primers. You see, there's also the Federal 210 match primer. That's still a fairly stout primer. So these are the things that I change. And along the line, if I want even even more accuracy. I'll fiddle a little bit with seating depth. I normally start out around 30 thousandths if I can off the, off the rifling in the chamber with the bullet. I may increase that to you know 40 thousandths off. I might decrease it to 20 thousandths off. In rare instances I might change it to 10 in some of our smaller calibers and one thing or another or it allows but that's not very much clearance after you fired a few rounds 
in your rifle and your rifle chamber is a little bit dirty you know you're much better off sticking off just a little bit further now if I was doing bench rest shooting for competition and things like this I might even seat my bullet just just to touch the rifling well, you've got to understand I'm sitting at a shooting bench I'm not in the mountains I'm not in a hunting situation where things could go astray after I have loaded around that's just touching the rifling that the rifle's been shot a bit and I load around and then I unload it hours later you know to put it back in my cartridge belt and something might want to kind of stick this is not a wise thing for your hunting aspect so this is why I always start right around 30 thousandths off and invariably somewhere there 30 maybe 20 right in that vicinity as you're where you're going to find that most of your rifles are going to perform and yes I understand there's many situations especially today where we've got these very long bullets they've got a very long point and in addition they've got plastic tips and this changes the whole ball game this plastic tip because it, it, it adds about 125 to 150 thousandths to the point of the bullet it restricts your ability especially to do with the magazine box length to load to where you can get it say 30 thousandths off the rifling and following these techniques trying different powders and so forth I've always been a great one to use the slower the slower burning rate of powder for the case because I learned very early on that the denser the load that means the the better that you feel fill the, the volume of that case with the bullet seated the more near that you're going to obtain the best performance with that cartridge it should only stand to reason that a 30 6 is going to use about medium burning rate type of powder than a 300 Weatherby the 300 Weatherby wouldn't work worth a darn, for instance, loaded with 4064. You'd have a real problem because there'd be a tremendous amount of airspace in the case and you might really run into some real, real issues. Likewise, the slow burning powder takes up more area because of the size of the granules and one thing or another. It's not going to work. H1000 will not work in a 30 off 6. You see, and you can look in almost all these reloading manuals, and they generally have a burning rate chart for all of the powders. If it's not in the reloading manual, go perhaps to, you know, computer to do with one of the companies and see if they've got a chart. Somebody's got a chart to do with the burning rates of powders. There's many, many powders that are somewhat like other powders. Say one or two powders away from 4831 faster or slower. Now, just picking a powder, a powder because it's in the reloading manual does not mean that that's the thing. If you look at velocities in the reloading manual and look at powder charges, go to where it shows the heaviest charge with a particular powder, heavier charge compared to others. In other words, H1000 is going to be a heavier charge than, for instance, Hodgson's 4831 or 4350 or 4064. I'm going down to the fast end, you see. This is how you pick these things. And uh, quite often in a column, along with the velocities, they indicate the percentage of the capacity of the case that's filled. 96%, maybe 100%, maybe 105%. Well, that 105% is going to have a C beside it, which means it was probably compressed. 
And that's not a bad thing. A lot of times compressed charges, compressed charges end up being very, very accurate and very, very uniform charges because that powder cannot move in the case. It's confined in the case and when it's compressed, it tends to become, to some extent, kind of a solid instead of individual granules and everything everything else being equal and nothing else to disturb that aspect it could be one of the most accurate loads that you develop for your rifle and this compressed aspect happens with reasonably slow burning rate powders so I understand that at this point in time Things are kind of narrowed down a bit for all of us reloading because of supply and demand. We've got people that have sat at computers all day long and bought up everything that there is and trying to sell it for three and four and five and ten times what it costs on the retail market. And this is part of why we can't find ammunition, why we can't find bullets, why we can't find powders or cartridge cases because unfortunately this wonderful, this wonderful, you know, hobby that we have of shooting and enjoying reloading and so forth has been hampered somewhat by very selfish individuals that have caused a problem. So anyway, I hope that you've enjoyed what I've had to say and I would recommend that if you have a deep interest that whatever video that I put out whether this one or whatever it is that you may perhaps listen to it a couple of times or maybe three or four times so that you're not missing anything so anyway that's where it's at have fun shooting